Hello everyone. I hope everyone had a good week this week. And we are on this today Sunday and the 24th I think and we are on lesson 2 and uh we're going to talk about Acts 6 and 7. And I'm actually just going to read right from the Bible and then add a few things later um to our lesson. So I will be paraphrasing some of it um and just explaining what goes on. 7 is kind of long. Um, so bear with me. In those days when the number of disciples was increasing, the Grecian Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer in the ministry of the word. So it is um, giving that job to others so that their ministry does not suffer. The proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. And there are some other people also, um, so I'm not going to read all of the names. And they presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly. And a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. So the spirit was really working. Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, did great wonders and miraculous signs among the people. Opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as the provinces of Sicilia and Asia. These men began to argue with Stephen, but they could not stand up against his wisdom or the spirit by whom he spoke. And of course, that is God's spirit, the Holy Spirit in him. Then they secretly persuaded some men to say, We have heard Stephen speak words of blasphemy against Moses and against God. So they stirred up the people and the elders and the teachers of the law. They seized Stephen and brought him before the Sanhedrin. And that is the, Pharise that is the, um, the main committee, let's say, made up of Pharisees and, Seduce and Sadducees. Um, they produced false witnesses who testified. Of course, this is not the first time it's happened. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs Moses handed down to us. All who were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked intently at Stephen, and they saw that his face was like an angel. That's the Holy Spirit right there. And starting with seven, here's Stephen's speech to the Sanhedrin. Then the high priest asked him, Are these charges true? To this he replied, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham while he was still in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran. Leave your country and your people. And God said, I will go go to the land that I will show you. Now we see a lot of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And I'll speak to that a little bit later. Um, but here we see God's promises to Abraham. So he left the land of the Chaldeans and settled in Haran. After the death of his father, God sent him to this land where he now lives. He gave him no inheritance here, not even a foot of ground, but God promised him that he and his descendants after him would possess the land, even though at that time Abraham had no child. God spoke to him in this way, your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own, and they will be enslaved and mistreated 400 years, and that did come to pass when they were in Egypt. But it was uh, prophesied here long before. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves, God said, and afterward they will come out of their country and worship me in this place. Then he gave Abraham the covenant of circumcision, and Abraham became the father of Isaac and circumcised him eight days after his birth. Later Isaac became the father of Jacob, and Jacob became the father of the twelve patriarchs. Because the patriarchs were jealous of Joseph, they sold him as a slave into Egypt, but God was with him. 
and rescued him from all his troubles. He gave Joseph wisdom and enabled him to gain the goodwill of Pharaoh the king and made him ruler over Egypt and all his palace. Then a famine struck Egypt and Canaan, bringing great suffering, and our fathers could not find food. So this is the story of how Jacob's sons go to Joseph. They don't know it's Joseph, but he's the one distributing the food during the famine. I'm sure you remember this. And uh, he ended up saving their family because he was able to give them food, and they were able to come to Goshen, which was right outside the area where he was and uh, live there. And then Joseph died, of course, and the pharaohs didn't know anything about him. And they dealt tre treacherously with the people. They were slaves. And then Moses was born. And you know the story there. Um, his mom saved him. She put him in uh, in the Nile River with in a basket that she made. And he ended up, of course, this was div a divine appointment. He ended up at Pharaoh's palace when the princess was there by the water with all her ladies with her. And she knew it was a Hebrew baby and she had a heart to take him in. And he grew up in the palace. So God gave him this wonderful, um, he had the best education, um, the best of everything. And so um, when he was 40 years old and then he decided to visit the Israelites and one was trying to kill the other. He told them not to. And they said, who are you? You know, who are you to tell us? And uh, actually, he um, he actually killed a man, one of the men. And this man saw it and said, I saw you the other day. So he ran. He had to run. I don't want to go into that story too much. Um, and then there's 40 years that pass. And Moses sees the flaming bush. And uh, that's when God tells him, take off your sandals, it's holy ground, and that he was going to have Moses deliver the people. And eventually he did. Um, let's see, this is what I wanted to read. Um, and they made, remember they made the golden calf and they made an idol. But God turned away and gave them over to the worship of the heavenly bodies. This agrees with what which, which was written in the book of the prophets. Did you bring me sacrifices and offerings 40 years in the desert, O house of Israel? You have lifted up the shrine of Moloch, the star of your god Rephim, the idols you made to worship. Therefore, I will send you into exile beyond Babylon. Our forefathers had the tabernacle of the testimony with them in the desert. It had been made as God directed Moses. And having received it, our, um, our fathers under Joshua brought it with them when they took the land from the nations that God drove out from them. So he's going over the whole history. However, the Most High, now this he got from the word of Isaiah. However, the Most High does not live in houses made by men. As the prophet says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or where will my resting place be? Has not my hand made all of these things? Now, this is, he's going to make them angry here, but he's telling the truth. You stiff-necked people with uncircumcised hearts and ears, you are just like your fathers. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your fathers did not prosecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him, you who have received the law that was put into effect through the angels, but have not obeyed it. Like I said, they got angry. You know, a lot of times when people get defensive, it's because you're telling the truth. Or at least there's a bit of truth to what you say. And that makes them angry. And this is kind of what happens here. When they heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. They were so mad and so angry. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. 
Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. Now only someone with the Holy Spirit can think of others like that during a time like this. Instead of yelling, this isn't fair, I didn't do anything. You know, he he just was full of the Holy Spirit and knew that they were blind, that they did not know Jesus, that they um, didn't know the Holy Spirit. And uh, so now I want to talk about how in this passage we do talk about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So here's some examples of God the Father. There are some more. God appeared to Abraham and said to go to a new land. God promised Abraham he would possess the land. God was with Joseph and rescued him. We read that in chapter 7. God appeared to Moses and told him he heard the groaning of his people and would rescue them. God led his people into the promised land, driving out their enemies. God is in heaven with Jesus and is glorious. And now God the Son... Even the prophets knew that God would finally display his presence in the Messiah, but the religious leaders, leaders didn't believe that Jesus is God in the flesh and that he rose from the dead or that he is exalted in heaven. When Stephen told his accusers the truth about Jesus, how did they respond? With anger. We're the religious leaders. Don't tell us what to do. And you know, that's what sin is. Sin is don't tell me what to do. I can do what I want. And I used to tell my kids when I taught, it's, it's, um, I want what I want, when I want, um, I want it now, you know, that's sin. In Acts 6, we learn that the Holy Spirit empowered the deacon Stephen to help widows. He also was empowered to do miracles and speak with wisdom. And we see how the Holy Spirit helped him as he spoke to the Sanhedrin and they saw the wisdom. They, they saw that, all right, but they didn't um, agree with it. In the past, Israel had refused to listen to Moses and the prophets, and the Jews of Stephen's day rejected Stephen and his message. By the way, yeah, we went through, so God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Okay. Um, Stephen called his hearers stiff-necked people. He said they were like stubborn oxen that stiffened their necks and refused to be directed. The Sanhedrin, the Jewish council, wouldn't trust God or obey him and the scriptures, and they wouldn't repent. Stephen spoke the truth to his hearers, knowing that they had the power to put him to death. As they became more and more enraged at his words, Stephen saw the glory of God and the risen Christ standing at the Father's right hand in heaven. That's all the Sanhedrin needed to hear. They dragged him out of the city and started to stone him, and as he was dying, he thinks of them. He asked the Lord Jesus not to blame them for killing him and to receive his spirit. Then Stephen, the first Christian martyr, a martyr, a martyr is someone who dies for the cause of Christ, uh, died and went to be with his Savior in heaven. So I hope that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit and I know this, will be with you this week. And listen to that spirit, that still small voice inside of you, because God has come to reside in you once you accept Christ as your Savior. So I hope you'll have a good week. I'm praying for all of you. Again, if there's any special prayer requests, I just uh, text me or call me or email me. At my email is in the, the directory, whatever way you'd like. Um, so have a great week, and God bless you all. Bye-bye.